This is the Power Break Podcast number 237, titled, A Lot of Groaning. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Bob, I'm moving all around the country on you, buddy. I'm in Rhode Island right now. Today in Rhode Island, the you know, last time in North Carolina, you've been in Florida. The, so the question is, maybe we should start the podcast on guess where JT is today. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a great idea. I, I can be. We can change our name, my name, to Waldo, and I'll wear a striped red shirt. <laughs> you can try to figure out where I am. It'll be perfect. So in Rhode Island, you're visiting your aunt. I understand. That is correct. Or as they say in North Carolina, my aunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm finished. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was really funny because I said, "Yeah, I'm going up to visit my aunt," and everybody looked at me. They're like, "Who?" I'm like. Ant? Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> it is. No, there you go. Well, yep. folks, let's let's uh, take some time here just to thank our listeners for listening to the Power Break podcast. JT uh, appreciates it, don't you, JT? Them listening? I do. Yeah, this is awesome, man. I um, I am always overwhelmed by the fact that anybody would download anything that I personally do. You, Bob, you're you're kind of the star of the show, but. Um, yeah, no, me, we're in this, it's we're humbling in this, for sure. <laughs> we're in this together <clears throat> and folks, we, we appreciate you listening to the podcast and thank you for telling others about the podcast. And of course the, uh, rating and reviewing, um, what you do at wherever you download the podcast, that really does help us. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's so awesome. And, um, you know, it, all the five star reviews, make it to where when people start to search for a podcast about specifically what we do, uh, we're one of the first ones that show up. So I am very grateful. Yeah. So thank you very much. Well, JT, today we're talking about that subject, a lot of groaning. What comes to your mind? (laughs) My kids. That's what comes to my mind. Almost immediately. It's like, ah, you know, everything's so dramatic. But, you know, if I'm truthful... I'm probably the same way. I've just learned to hide a little bit better as I get older. Um, Hmm. But, you know, it just sometimes we get caught in that cycle of um, just drudgery to where, like, everything we feel is an inconvenient or it makes us anxious or it's something that's bad news or um, we just get stuck in a rut. You know, I was talking to my aunt this morning about, um, you know, it's so important for us to not only physically work out, but mentally work out. And what I mean by that is, you know, kind of learning as Paul did, as Paul encourages us to do in scripture, um, to be content in all places and all surroundings and all situations and learn how to do that by taking control of all your thoughts and consciously making the outcome of those thoughts positive instead of the negative um, that we normally fall into. And that's what, that's what pops into mind. Like, you know, but I think about my kids going to bed, brushing their teeth, getting up, going to school, having homework. Oh, surprise. We have to go grocery shopping. All those things cause the groaning to occur, my friend. (laughs) Well, it's interesting. We're going to be looking at in, in the article about, um, and a lot of groaning that this takes place is described in the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 26, where it talks about the groaning of creation, our groaning, and even the growing, groaning of the Holy Spirit as he helps us to pray. Indeed, it uh. is very important to keep in mind when we go through the groanings of life that, as he says in First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, that we are to cast all of our care, including all of our groaning, upon him because he cares for us. Yeah, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been over to BobRubaker.com, check that out. As always, I would encourage you um, to look at the books and the resources and see if there's anything in there that can help you with your walk. 
Um, but at the very least, sign up for the uh, blog. It'll get delivered to you every Monday and get you ready for the next Power Break podcast. But let's continue to talk more about a lot of groaning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, JT, I, I, I started the article by saying, have you noticed all the groaning of people lately? And that's probably what uh, triggered this writing of this article. Maybe oh, it interesting. Is, yeah, maybe it is a sign of the time or a sign of much stress. And that seems to be the sign of the time anyway. Uh, maybe a sign that we really don't belong in this world, as described there in the book of Romans chapter 8, which we'll get to in a moment. But notice how much groaning is described there in this passage of Romans 8 and verse Uh, 18 verse through 26. I'll I'll read it and I'll bring those things out. Consider, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed in us for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together (laughs) in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, and now hope that is seen is not hope, but for who hopes for what he sees. But if we hope for that which we do not see, we wait with patience for it. Now, likewise, he says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we don't even know how to know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us with groanings too deep for words. Yeah, what is that? What exactly does that mean, Bob? Well, uh, there seems to be this, as we look at that and we break it down, there seems to be a groaning from creation. Uh, looking forward to the the renewal, the new heavens and the new earth, when sin will be, the effects of sin will be lifted and taken away, taken out of the earth, and right. also uh, the groaning from God's people because there, even though as you go through the stresses of life, there is that indication that this is really not your home. Your home is right. in heaven, That's and right. your home is with the Lord, and so. Uh, so we, because of the burdens of life, we seem to, to groan. And speaking of those burdens, as we go to God in prayer, the Holy Spirit helps us to unburden ourselves before God in prayer. And that's where it says that he even groans with us with uh, groanings too deep for words. So there's a lot of groaning going on. So let's break it down. First of all, we kind of grasp the groaning of creation. We understand the magnitude of the stench of sin in the sight of God. When, when sin entered the world, all creation felt the curse. And even it says in Genesis chapter 3 that cursed is the ground because of you, Adam, because in, in, it says in pain you shall eat of it all, eat all the days of your life. In Psalm 113, it says God humbles himself to look down on the face of the earth because of the sin and rampant decay that is here because of sin. And we also understand the groaning of mankind, especially that of God's children living in this world. In the world that is against God and there's a multitude of stresses, we tend to groan every day like the children of Israel in bondage when they groaned because they were in Egypt. And that seems to right. be the case for God's people now. So in other words, Christians yeah. groan because of the status of life and, you know, not just the thing, bad things happening, but just because they're in a, a world that's a anti-Christ, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, you know, the first thing I thought about when I saw the, the article title scripturally was going back to um, Israel's time in, in uh, the forest. Egypt? Yeah. Well, oh, well when they were kind of working their way over to the promised land, yeah, and they 40 were forty years of wandering, <laughs> wandering. Yeah, it, it, it. You know, I think about the complaining about the manna. I think about you know the snakes. I think about all the things. I, you know, I have no idea how Moses dealt with it. To be honest with you, because <laughs> it just seemed like it was a constant state yeah. of moaning and groaning. But the truth is, we all have that tendency, as you talked about, because of original sin. We all have that tendency to go towards that negativity and that anxiousness and the things that aren't productive for us are are certainly not good for our spirit, don't we? 
That's right. And so when we think about the groanings of life from a Christian, they, there's just something inside of us. That, as a matter of fact, the testimony of the Holy Spirit himself, as he calls it the first fruits of the Spirit, that we know that there's something better for us. Our citizenship right. is in heaven for that we wait for it, it says. And so here we are. So we do a lot of groanings. It's kind of like this. When it says in Second Corinthians chapter 5, we know that the, the tent that is our earthly home, the body, If it is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan and longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting on uh, an arm we may not be found naked, but while we... uh, well, we are still in this tent. We groan, being burdened that we're not uh, that we would be able, not just unclothed, but that we would be further clothed with our immortal bodies. So, in other words, God's people today, there's the inward testimony that we don't yep. really belong here, and so yes, yep. that's what we we're constantly fighting because the groans of life, not just of old age. <laughs> <laughs> that could old age oh. set in earlier that we, we, when we move, we kind of groan because it hurts a little bit, you know. <laughs> oh, you probably I don't know what you're school. talking about. I'm yeah. a spring chicken. Are you kidding me? <laughs> College football beat me up so bad that by the time I became a police officer, I was I was always moaning and groaning. You were, you were doing a little groaning then, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, of course, now, the, the, our groans as believers are not just expressions of, or of complaint or just longing for those groans to be, uh, to be to a better day, but there's also part of our prayer life as we bring our burdens to God. We yeah, do right. not, however, yeah. come by ourselves. We have the help of the Holy Spirit who lifts our heavy burdens with groanings that cannot be uttered. Best way to express that is go to the gym and hear those guys that are lifting some big weights. Did you ever do that yeah. when you're lifting heavy weights? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't get all crazy dramatic like some of them, but yes, sometimes I'll give it a little grunt there, Bob. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and yeah. matter of fact, that's proven to help. It does yeah. give you for extra, sure. extra. Okay. So think about this: when you are burdened down with one of the burdens of life, and you go to God in prayer. So you're you're doing as it says in First Peter chapter five and verse seven: you are casting your care upon the Lord, right? So yep. you, here you are, you have this heavy burden on your shoulders and you're lifting it up to God. Okay. But you can't do that on your own because it's so heavy. Right. And that's where we count on the help of the Holy Spirit, that we have assurance that we have the help of the Holy Spirit and the assurance that when he's helping us, he groans with groans that really can't even be uttered. It is far beyond the groaning state. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that good? I mean, just stop and think it about is. it. It is, yeah. If, if you and I were lifting a piano, you get, yep. that would be pretty much of a joke. But anyway, nevertheless. Yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't get it very far, or okay, it's a very so, small piano. And if, I, if we were lifting a piano and I heard you groaning, I would be encouraged to know that you're really working at it. I'm putting it into it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, that's so right. the assurance from Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 is that when you go to God in prayer... You need help getting rid of this heavy burden on your shoulders. And he says, the assurance is the Holy Spirit is growing. So you know he's lifting that burden. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And it's such a great picture. I think, um, you know, one of the things that I, I talked about with somebody at church this week, as a matter of fact, was about worship. We were we were kind of talking about um, the different kinds of worship that are talked about in Scripture, um, oftentimes the word worship is used for one of seven different words in Scripture. And all those words mean something a little bit different in regard to worship. But the English language only has that word worship, really, to kind of describe it. So that's what's used in translation. But one of the things that about worship is you are going to worship something in your life. Why? Mm-hmm. Because you are structured in a way, you are built right. in a way that you are made to worship. You're made to worship God. But so many times we worship other things. And the worship of the other things, because those things fail, because they are not God, cause the moaning, the anxiousness, Mm. all of the things. Um, Good point. Yeah, so you know, just remember that you're made to worship something and that can that can help with the groaning that can help with that negative attitude that feeling of helplessness or anxiety or whatever it is 
Yeah, that's right. Well, check out the article. The article is called A Lot of Groaning. And, of course, you'll find the article called The Power Break Blog. You'll find it at bobbrubaker.com. So what would you like the listeners to know about this week, Bob? Well, speaking of groaning, I wrote a book last year about uh, the groanings of life, and called it's called Relief and Suffering, where I take apart what God has given us for a time of suffering from the book of James chapter 5. The Relief and Suffering, you'll find that book with a dark cloud on the cover. It kind of depicts what uh, you feel when you're in the time of suffering. So check it out mm-hmm. at com. Look for the book Relief in Suffering and order your copy today. While you're at BobRubaker.com, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. Going through the book of Second Peter at the moment. And what a book that is, is very applicable. And so check it out, the links of the sermons I preach, and as well as the books. It's all at BobRubaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT, along with Bob Rubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at JT at BobRubaker.com, and we'll get to answering that question on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. So... Question number one from the spiritual side of life. Before, so you before can, we get to that, give us an uh, update. Like, uh, how, what do things look like in Rhode Island? It's been a long time since I've been to Rhode Island. So where she lives specifically is pretty close to the water. So I woke up this morning, okay. you know, jumped in the shower. It's definitely colder. It's like in the 20s. I went out because I was going to go up to Dunkin' Donuts because... As they say in New England, you got to get your dunks in the morning. So I went to Dunkin' Donuts, grabbed a coffee, (laughs) and there was a powdering of snow on my car. Ooh. Yeah, so I was like, oh, man, I'm definitely not in Kansas anymore, or North Carolina, as as is probably more appropriate. Um, But honestly, it is beautiful up here. but you know it's it's very uh, it's very New England, which which me being from New England, it, it's it feels homey to me. It feels um, very comforting. So for me, when I go back to New England, I it makes me feel feel like I'm back home. Sometimes, yeah. There you um, go. Yeah, even though I feel like North Carolina is my home too. So um, it's my home with big mountains that I love <laughs> that I already miss. But Wait, yeah, well, you, so, you had your Dunkin' uh, this morning, huh? Dunks, yeah, that's right. Oh, dunks. dunks, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Got to go to Dunks. Yeah, that I mean, where, they, that's where that place, where, that thing, that franchise started there, or, or that company started of, there, didn't they? Of course, yeah. That and Honeydew Donuts; those are the two big up here. Oh big boy, ones up here. Most people have never even heard of Honeydew. Have so the, the question I have for you, JT, mm-hmm. did you tell did them I? that you were a former police officer? <laughs> No. <laughs> Number one, just understand this. You may not always run into somebody at a fat fast food restaurant in general that likes police officers. Just saying it's possible. And I'm just saying uh, I don't want anything extra in my food. So, yeah, there's no advertisement going on here, my friend. Okay. Well, I just, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I know you have always fought that stigma that, uh, you know, that police officers hang out at the donut <laughs> shop. Remember, they go to Dunkin' Donuts, they just shouldn't eat a donut, which I don't do. That's a stigma that needs to end. We're not all donut, <laughs> as one of my friends was called, a donut-eating swine. Um, and it was so <laughs> funny because of how badly, like, this guy treated this officer my officer ended up on CNN. It was it was like international news because the guy was yelling at him and calling him a donut eating swine. It oh was really goodness. yeah, it was really pretty. Actually, it was probably very embarrassing for the guy that he wrote the ticket to. But yeah, wow, donut eating swine. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make you groan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so let's get back into question number one from the spiritual side, because uh, perhaps this this guy that called him a donut eating swine needed a spiritual awakening of some kind. So hopefully we're reaching that guy today. Um, so you covered this in the article, but explain again how the groaning of the Holy Spirit, which man, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that, benefits us. Well, of course, we mentioned First Peter chapter five verse seven that we're to cast all of our anxieties or our cares upon Him because He cares for us. 
um, that principle is taken. People think that Peter was actually uh, referring back to Psalm 55, verse 22, where it says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But there in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, he says, the spirit helps us with our weakness for we don't even know what to pray for as we ought. So sometimes when we go to God in prayer, it seems like that uh, uh, even our prayers, we're, we're just, we don't even know what to, what to say, how to say it or whatever. Yeah, that's we know true. That we have, and we have the help of the Holy Spirit, which is really good because um, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to think about it. The, the Holy Spirit doesn't help us unless we pray. Yeah, there you go. Actually backing up, he, he prompts us to pray and then he helps us to pray. But if we resist the Holy Spirit and don't follow through and pray, we miss out on his help. So we have communion with the Holy Spirit as he helps us to pray. And one of the things he does, because prayer is actually casting our burdens on the Lord. And again, it's kind of a lifting here. It's a lifting event. And, you know, sometimes that, that event is a, it's an extremely heavy burden. We're carrying around a heavy burden of life. It could be a physical problem, financial problem, relational problem, whatever it is, it's a heavy, heavy burden. It's causing us to groan. So we're, we're to, we know the Bible says to cast it upon the Lord. So we go to God in prayer. And as we're going to God in prayer, we're casting that burden on him and we have the help of the Holy Spirit. And the mm. picture is he's helping us to lift that and take it to God. It's good news, yeah, it's, isn't it? It really is good news. Yeah, it's... Um, you know, I think a lot of us with the Holy Spirit, and, and at least for me in the past, you know, I really didn't get how much the Holy Spirit prompts you, but you also have to engage. There has to be um, a turning of your heart in regard to taking that help and prayer and getting involved. And, you know, because I think a lot of us uh, are guilty of, well, you know, if it's the Holy Spirit of God, then, you know, it. it He'll just take over. I I really can just be on autopilot. And that's really not how the Holy Spirit effectively changes you from the inside out. Um, the Holy Spirit right. requires engagement. And I think a lot of us, you know, get, get stuck in that part of it. Um, but the amount of help that's there for us for the, for the taking when that's all we have to do is turn towards it. It's pretty amazing stuff. Well, it's interesting that, that um, when you talk, talk about prayer, if you study those who are praying in the Bible and you look at that, yep. it was never passive. It was no, always ever. It's, it's activity and it's, it's seeking the Lord. And so when we, when we go to God in prayer, we must realize we desperately need his help even to do what, what he's called us to do. Yeah, one of my favorite pictures of prayer is when... Um, the Pharisee is in the um, is in the synagogue, and the man I I don't I think he was a tax collector. He came in and he started to pray, and you know he he just clutched his heart and he just was so desperate for God. And the Pharisee, all he did was he thanked God for making him better than that guy. And you know, I think oh, yeah. about the Pharisee, how, the publican, and it wasn't a Republican, publican. it was just the publican. <laughs> so he's a tax collector. The Pharisee and the tax is. collector. Okay, and, so uh, a publican yeah. is a tax collector. I thought it was a tax collector. I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, but I think about that, and I think about the honesty of the publican, and I think about the arrogance and pride of hmm. the Pharisee, and I think that's what prayer should be, that honesty, that desperation, that just passion that is involved in a true prayer to God. And I think that's the Holy Spirit, as you talked about. I think the Holy Spirit's just oh, exactly, working exactly. and pushing and just getting it all towards where it needs to go. It's just a beautiful picture. But that's that's probably my favorite picture of prayer, In um, besides maybe when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Um, but when you think about yeah. that example that he gave in Luke chapter 18, I always use that to say, you really cannot mess up prayer because the yeah. Holy Spirit also interprets what we really need according to Romans chapter 8 and the next verse there, in verse 27 of Romans chapter 8. But So he's always interpreting what we really mean to say before God. So he's straightening out the words. The only time that we can mess up prayer is when we go to God with 
pride and act like he should hear us because of who who we think we are and how good we think we are. <laughs> yes, yes. That's why I love that picture of the Pharisee. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like, thank you, God, for making me so much better than that guy. Especially yeah, I'm not awful. like this publican standing here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so question number two from the mental aspect. Um, you know, there's a lot to wrap your mind around when it comes to the Holy Spirit. You know, we give so much time when we are studying Scripture to our relationship with God and our relationship with His Son. And a lot of times we forget about the third part of the Godhead. We forget about the Holy Spirit. We forget mm-hmm. about that helper that's sent to us and we have direct access to and surrounds us and, and keeps us. I, I, I think it's really important for us to kind of get it. So how can we mentally connect our groaning with something good and not just a wordless expression of being overwhelmed? Like, with pain or circumstances that are around us? Like, how can we mentally connect our groaning with something good? Well, actually, uh, I looked at the, from the physical side, I mean, is, we're talking about mentally, but from the physical, kind of the mental to the physical, actually a groan is a very relaxing way to deal with the stresses of life. That's why many times when you go into a nursing home or someplace in hospitals, yeah. you'll hear people groaning. Yeah, that's right. Groaning is basically producing a 60-cycle hum over the vagus nerve, which sends a relaxing message to the brain. Bottom line, groaning is good for you. Now, your friends and family may not like it if you go around, <laughs> but, <laughs> No, I'm sure they won't. Back to our groan spiritually. Our groan is a sign of life. So mentally, we grasp hold of this. The groanings of life, because it indicates we have the first fruit of the Spirit, according to Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. Okay, we have the first fruit of the Spirit within us. That signifies the fact that we belong somewhere else. And because of that inward frustration, we don't feel at home in this world because our home is in heaven. So just as the whole creation has been groaning, looking forward to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and the making of all things new, We ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption. So that groaning, okay, whatever in this life is frustrating you or making you just groan because of it, keep in mind, it's an indicator that you have life, that you don't belong here. Yep, yep. So it's good. It's good to groan because it's a good indicator in our lives of life. You know, I think I think it's really, uh, you know, what you talked about. You know, it's so important for us to remember that um, the physical world is not our home. It's not a place where we should inherently feel comfort unless our spirit is connected with God and that comfort is coming from Him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of times we forget that. So, um, yeah, I... I can I think of a time to where, you know, there wasn't at least somebody around me that was going through something as opposed to me? Um, you know, that's just kind of life. But I, I love that, you know, the groaning is a sign that you're alive and that you're... Um, yeah. Yeah, and and that you understand this is not your home. I, it's such a great picture. Um, and I would encourage everybody, you know, to do more research if if... If it's hard to grasp the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works, it's just um, pretty amazing. And I think that's the third part of the Godhead that we just don't pay enough attention to, um, but it's the one that we have most access to, for lack of a better word. Hey, actually, we have access to all, but it's it, it's really the thing that was sent here specifically to help us, which is... Actually, pretty, actually the Lord Jesus nice. Christ points out that the person of the Holy Spirit is actually Him, because He right. says that he would not leave his disciples as orphans, but he would come to them. The next words out of his mouth describe the coming of the Holy Spirit. So he right. actually comes in the Holy Spirit. It's also interesting, the fact, this is why God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. There's three separate persons, but they are one. Jesus said in John 14, when uh, Philip said, just show us the Father, and that'll, that'll suffice us. <laughs> Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amazing. Because yeah. he and the Father are yeah. one. And he and the Holy Spirit are one. And so when we have 
when we have the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, it's the working of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's, it's just sometimes we we want to separate the persons of the Godhead, and sometimes we we go to extremes and we lose sight of the fact that God has promised to never leave us or forsake us. And he brings that to reality through the working of the Holy Spirit. But okay, our minds can't grasp it. It's too big for us, too wonderful right. for us. But when you talk about the presence of the Holy Spirit, it's the presence of God, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love it. Um, all right. I've, we have to transition, but I was really loving this conversation. So, <laughs> But, you know, the sponsors want us to get, you know, this done, even though we don't have any sponsors. <laughs> Third question is from the physical no. side of life. Um, I, I'm perfectly happy without sponsors, so then we, we can go longer than 30 minutes and nobody complains. Um, so what is this about underfueling, and how can it cause a sleep disorder? Well, folks, if you have any questions about this, send your cards and letters to JT at Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. Here's the deal. I've, here's what I found. Uh, by underfueling, you can cause uh, a lot of things going on in your life. And, and of course, we we'll bring up the subject of uh, the subject around this time of the year because people are in the interest of cutting calories. OK, and many yeah, times right. they do that. And while they're adding exercise, thinking that they're really going to cut off the pounds quickly. Well, too few of calories can underfuel you, which can cause many other things to happen in the body that you really don't want. Here's a name a few frequent injuries, frequent illnesses, iron deficiency, decreased performance physically on your job, prolonged irritability, uh, increased s poor sleep and the quantity as well as the quality, and prolonged low energy and prolonged low mood. So what do you do? I know. Just eat a big old meal and go to bed. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's a horrible no, idea, yeah. No, it's eating smart, not just cutting calories. So eating smart is notice what you eat and when you eat. But when you don't want that to happen, the negative side effects such as underfueling your body, which can really get into the, the, the physical side as far as eating. Sometimes people wake up in the middle of the night because they run out of fuel. Very simply. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, it, and the eating smart is really the key that you nailed. It, it, it's about, it's not really about um, calories as opposed to what kind of calories when it comes to how yeah. you're going to organize how you eat. Um, and being smart about, okay, well, I did this much work today, especially if you're an endurance athlete or you're doing a lot of weightlifting, you know, you know, you need more of certain things and just making sure that you understand I need more of these things. So I shouldn't, you know, just cause I'm trying to lose weight, I shouldn't cut severely these things when I know that my body needs more because a healthy body will lose weight faster as well. That's, that's a good point. Anyway, well, we just brought this up just to talk about it because many times people go into this mode of thinking, cut all the calories and they end up being what is called skinny fat. That, yeah, that's right. That, that they may not have the weight, but their bodies are just, you know, they're not they're so depleted that nothing is really happening. So uh, when you really take this in mind as far as eating, make sure that you're very smart about it, eating smart and then um, watching what, you know, watching some of the things that come, pop up that indicate that you're under fueling your body. And well, and the bottom line, it takes discipline to do all that is above and make sure that you do it right. And as we always say in this program, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobRebaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 237. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobRebaker.com and listen to our answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for Relief in Suffering, the book that we're talking about on today's program that we you can find at BobRubaker.com. Scroll through the resources to the books, and through the books, you'll find it. Relief in Suffering. Check out your copy today. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast, and check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.